All right, welcome to Integral Physics. Today what I wanna do is go through and work out the average and instantaneous velocity of a particle, which is gonna move around according to this position function. So we're gonna find the average velocity from a time of one second to a time of three seconds. And we're gonna find the instantaneous velocity at a time of two seconds. And what I wanna do in this problem is show you the average velocity is calculated in a completely different way then instantaneous velocity is calculated. Now looking first at average velocity, you'll remember average velocity is given by the equation. And average velocity is given by this equation, the displacement over the change in time. Now if we look at average velocity as a change in position over a change in time, you can see from a time of one second to a time of three seconds, there's a change in position, and that change in position is represented in our graph as a vertical shift from this point to this point. And our change in time is the horizontal shift from this point to this point. And if we look at these two quantities, change in position and change in time, as though we're in math class, not a physics class, we can see that these are ultimately forming two sides of a right triangle. And the two sides of this right triangle, you can think of as being the rise and the run. So really what that means when we look back up at this equation is our change in position or our rise divided by our change in time or our run is going to give us an average velocity. Really what that means is the slope or the average slope from this point to this point is going to be our average velocity. Now, in order to actually calculate this, what we're gonna to need to do is evaluate this equation which is governing the motion of this particle at these two different points in time. So first evaluating this equation at a time of one second, and then evaluating the equation at a time of three seconds. We find where the particle is at these two different points in time. And so plugging these two positions into our equation here, we get our average velocity is our final position, that's 32, minus our initial position, that's six, divided by the elapsed time from a time of one to a time of three. So it's gonna be three minus one. So we find the average velocity between a time of one second and a time of three seconds is 13. So now I wanna find the instantaneous velocity at a time of two seconds. And in order to do that, we're gonna to need to take a look at our position function and apply a little bit of calculus. See, to find the instantaneous velocity, what we're gonna to need to do is find the slope of this curve over here at a single point. Now, when finding the slope of a curve between two points, we were able to use this equation. But we can't use this equation when we're looking at just a single point along this curve because there is only an infinitely small change in position at that single point. And what that means is we have to apply calculus to this problem in order to solve for the velocity at that point in time. Now, when relating position to velocity in physics and in calculus, we can say that the velocity is given by the derivative of position with respect to time. So what that means is we're gonna take the derivative of this function and that will give us a function for the velocity as a function of time. Taking the derivative of five with respect to t, that's zero plus the derivative of t cubed, that's gonna be three t squared. Now we have an equation that's gonna describe the velocity at any point in time, which we simply need to evaluate at a time of two seconds. And we find that the velocity at a time of two is 12. Now one important thing to point out here is that the average velocity from a time of one to a time of three, which we found was 13, is not the same as the instantaneous velocity at a time of two. So it's important to realize that average velocity and instantaneous velocity might sound similar, but they are not the same thing. And you have to be careful in how you calculate them because they are calculated in completely different ways. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.